Okay, so quick video on the hypothalamus. Uh, first, we're going to start off looking at this image. It's in page 130 of the textbook. Um, just is a, what he's going to use, I think, to show us the hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamus, at the start of page maybe 130, somewhere in there, tells you what is included. Hypothalamus includes all these nuclei. It includes the optic chiasm, and it includes the infundibular stalk. Does not include the pituitary, doesn't include the thalamus, doesn't include the corpus callosum, doesn't include the optic nerve. Um, it only includes those nuclei, the stalk, and the chiasm. So I think that's a pretty good multiple choice. He's going to give us all these options, which one is not included, and it'll be pituitary gland or optic nerve or something like that. Um, and now, just because I find it really helpful to look at things and where they are in relation to each other, here's a cross section of the brain. Here's the putamen and all those uh, central nucleus that we've been talking about in the, the cerebral nucleus. Um, so you can kind of see where those are. Coming in now, right in the middle, there's the hypothalamus right there. So you can kind of see why it's got that goofy shape in our picture. Coming into the hypothalamus, you've got that optic chiasm, which is where the optic nerves cross over. Um, so when we look at the image, you see the big optic chiasm circle down at the bottom of the anterior portion. That's what we're looking at, a cross-section of this right here. So from the hypothalamus, then going down, you've got that infundibulum or infundibular stalk. And then going down from there, you've got the pituitary gland or hypophysis. Um, now something to keep in mind here as well, this right there, this is the lateral ventricle. So that's going to be important when we're naming the paraventricular nucleus because that's how I remember where it is because it's so close to this lateral ventricle. Um, and then just to look at where it is in relation to other things, there's the cerebral peduncles, which is part of the midbrain. Um, everything else is going to be hard to see uh, just without moving things around. The thalamus is going to be back in here somewhere, kind of above and behind that hypothalamus. So there's that, and that's what we're looking at. Um, you should be able to see the mammillary body as well. It might have got taken away when I was uh, removing images from here. But anyway, that's what we're looking at. Um, so getting right into it again, this is what is included in the hypothalamus. When Torgrud goes through, he divided it into three sections, and I found that really helpful. You've got the anterior portion, the intermediate portion, and the posterior portion. Remember, it's only here, it's not any of this up here, I'm just using that for drawing. Um, so you've got the anterior division, the intermediate, and the posterior. Now the anterior, to remember in there, if it helps you, if numbers help you, help you, you've got five nuclei to remember in there. In the intermediate portion, you have four to remember, and in the posterior, you have two to remember. So then when I break it down like that, I found it really helpful. Another thing as well, in general, anterior and intermediate deal with sympathetic. Posterior, did I say sympathetic? I meant parasympathetic. Posterior deals with sympathetic functions. Um, so that might help you a little bit too. He might ask which deals with parasympathetic, sympathetic, that sort of thing. Um, getting into naming them. Get rid of this. Now getting into naming them, you got this one right up here. Remember where we remember where I showed you where the lateral ventricle was in relation to it? So that's how I remember which one that is. That's the paraventricular nucleus. Um, and we're also going to bring this one up because they have a very similar or the same job, as far as we know. Down there, you've got the supraoptic. Because it's right above that optic chiasm right here. So it's the supraoptic, supra meaning above. Now, what they do is they send a tract right down here into the posterior pituitary, both of them do. And that tract has got that big long name we got to remember, the hypothalamo hypophysial tract. And what it does when it gets to that posterior pituitary, posterior pituitary is release ADH and oxytocin. Um, that would be a decent multiple choice because we know that in the anterior pituitary we've got releasing factors, 
Um, so we got to know that it's not releasing factors. It is ADH and oxytocin in the posterior pituitary. Um, so it comes from the anterior portion and goes to the posterior portion of the pituitary. So don't get those confused. Um, so that's those two nuclei. Coming from there, just down below, you've got the pre-optic nuclei. And I remember that one because it's closest to the eyes, so it's pre-optic. Um, close to the eyes, that's probably not how it's named, but that's how I remember it. Um, this deals with warming up. But don't get confused like I did on this last quiz. It's as you warm up. Um, I made the mistake of thinking it causes you to warm up, which would mean it would cause you to shiver. But it's not. It deals with sweating because it's as you warm up. So as you warm up, you sweat in order to cool down. So pre-game warm up, don't get, those, don't get that confused with the posterior nucleus that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. So remember pre-optic, pre-game, as you warm up. Uh, new color. Then from there, we've got the anterior nucleus. Just It's in the anterior division. We don't need to remember a lot about it other than it has parasympathetic function. Um, in brackets, he all says that it also has some sympathetic. Don't know how much detail he's going to want to go to. Generally, in brackets, he doesn't seem to focus too much on that. So we'll just say some, some sympathetic with mostly parasympathetic. Um, and that's, that's about all we need to know about that one. And then right next to that, we have the suprachiasmatic. Suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this one deals with circadial rhythms. Circadial rhythms. That means it's dealing with, um, with temperature, sleep, light, food, when you get hungry, all that sort of thing. So suprachiasmatic right there. I don't have any special way to remember that one. The rest of them kind of make a little bit of sense, so this one you have to remember by default. Um, it says that it also is connected to the pineal gland, which is way back here. I think he says complexly related, so I don't think we need to know a whole lot about how that happens, but the pineal gland I think deals with um, the circadial rhythms as well, but I don't think we went into details to how that all happens. And then just to highlight as well, this is that um, optic chiasm. So that's where they cross over. Remember, this is just a cross section um, of what we'd seen before. Coming in too, that's that optic nerve that we dealt with um, going to the optic chiasm. And then from there, the nerves will continue um, out eventually to the, to the occipital lobe, I think. Um, now we move into the intermediate division, still parasympathetic. Actually, we're going to talk about the middle one first because it's the easiest to remember. That's the ventral medial nucleus. And ventral medial, if you put your hands in your stomach, after you have a big, huge meal, you put your hands in your stomach and you think you feel full, and that's good because this one deals with satiety. Ventral in front, medial in the middle, so the ventral medial portion of your body, like Dan had said in our classes, past classes, that's when you know you feel full. So this one deals with the feeling of, of fullness, hunger and thirst gratification. Just above that, we have the dorsal medial nucleus. Um, dorsal fin on a fish is on its back, but fish is always swim, or fish always swim with their dorsal fin facing up. So if you forget which is which, just remember dorsal, dorsal on the back but on top. So dorsal medial because it's also in this medial division. Um, and we need to remember that it deals with GI tract parasympathetic fun functions. Um, so I would assume that's talking about peristalsis and that sort of thing, but I don't know for sure. I don't know how much detail he's going to go into with that one. Um, and coming down here, we've got this arcuate nuclei. And the arcuate nuclei are the ones he'll probably ask several questions on because they deal with um, a specific tract. Um, but it's actually a collection of nuclei. It's several nuclei um, that are in an arc. And that's where they get that name. This doesn't look like an arc to us, but somewhere in some angle it looks like an arc. So it's the arcuate nuclei. And what we need to remember about them, or about that, <clears throat> is that it sends a tract down right to here. It sends a tract, so I can't write that in yellow. 
it sends a track to the perivascular space of the infundibulum. So I think that that's a good test question. He has, he's going to ask where it goes to. It doesn't go to the anterior pituitary. It doesn't go to the posterior pituitary. Um, it doesn't just go to the infundibulum in general. It goes to the perivascular uh, space of the infundibular stalk. Um, and then when it gets there, it releases releasing factor into the bloodstream and those releasing factor are in the bloodstream now and what they'll do is go through the bloodstream to the anterior pituitary which will cause pituitary horm hormones to be released I don't know if we have to know what they are in specific but just know that that tract does not go all the, all the way there and the name of that tract since I didn't write it down is the tubro infundibular tract and it's called the tubro infundibular tract because this area right here is the fourth thing we have to remember it's called the tuber scenarium and all that the, all that our book says is that it's kind of a, a gray swelling um, between the infundibulum and the mammillary body right there um, so that and it includes some of the nuclei in the archaeonuclei so that's why I have this line going up and over it as well. So this tract, this tubero infundibular, gets its name because it goes through the tuber scenarium and ends in the infundibular stalk, the perivascular space of the infundibulum, where it releases releasing factors, or the really long name, the hypothalamic, hypophysiotropic hormones. Um, so I think he's, there's probably going to be two or three questions of the archaeonuclei. That, that would be my guess. Um, but that's all that you need to know. If you can understand those couple things, then you'll be fine. So going to the posterior division, remember this is now sympathetic functions. We've got the posterior nuclei. And the posterior nuclei, <coughs> um, it's, remember this one, because it's got the, the post-game cooldown. So what do you do in a post game? You cool down. So this is as you cool down. It doesn't cause you to cool down, it's as you cool down, which means that it's dealing with shivering, because as you cool down, you want to warm up. So just remember that it's not uh, not causational, it doesn't cause cooling down, It ha but this is active as you cool down. This is the one I think that was actually on the quiz, not the pre-optic. Uh, but this is the one that, that there was a question on that quiz that I got wrong. Um, and that was why, because I got the cause and effect cool, um, uh, mixed up. So posterior nucleus, post-game cool down. It's as you cool down, so it causes shivering. Pre-optic causes sweating, because um, it's as you warm up. Last thing we got to remember down here is the mammillary body. We're going to draw it up here mammillary body and we need to know that it deals with short-term memory he brought up Korsakov syndrome um, I don't know how to spell Korsakov 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 syndrome um, which is a problem with your memory uh, he said he mentions it being from alcohol um, I don't know how in-depth he's gonna go with that but mammillary body short-term memory um, it says it has a nucleus with hippocampal formation and anterior thalamic nuclei. I don't know how, like I said, I don't know how in depth he's going to go, but I'm just trying to remember that mammillary body deals with short term memory. Um, so that's about it for the hypothalamus. It seems like a lot, but when you break it down into the groups um, of 5, 4, and 2, the anterior, intermedi intermediate, posterior, the parasympathetic, and the sympathetic. Um, and then you kind of look at the naming of them in their in relation to their locations and what they do and their tracks they send out. Um, it's a lot easier to deal with. But that's about it. Hope it was helpful.